Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko and we're in for a treat. Today is the first day of the Supreme Gecko breeding facility tour and we start with crested geckos. It started 20 years ago. What was once a simple hobby, keeping a pair of leopard geckos in a glass fish tank grew to what is today 21 racks of over 650 reptile and isopod enclosures. Renowned for the amazing crusted and gargoyle geckos produced every year, the facility also features an assortment of rare geckos, including leaf tails, cat and cave geckos, leopard geckos, day geckos, micro geckos, and a variety of African Madagascar geckos. And over 50 species of isopods. The facility features advanced misting systems to control humidity, its own feeder insect room, and hot and cold temperature regulated breeding areas. Join us on a tour of one of the larger, privately owned reptile breeding and isopod breeding operations you will ever see. Join us on a tour of the Supreme Gecko Breeding Facility. When I talk about the Supreme Gecko Breeding Facility, I'm talking about 21 racks. That's a lot of animals. I would imagine at any given time we have between 500 and 1,000 animals down here. This is a breeding facility. A lot of tanks that we'll see later on are display tanks, but most of these enclosures are set up for breeding purposes only. You won't see a lot of bioactive enclosures. You won't see a lot of live plants. These are set up specifically to breed animals, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. So this is our very first stand that we're going to be looking at, and it's our 20-gallon, I called it our 20-gallon Crested Gecko breeding stand. These are all 20 highs, except for two tanks, which are 20 extra high. And that's a lot of room for a, a pair of Crested Geckos. This is the very first stand that we put together. This goes back probably about 18 years. This is a very simple stand. It's made up of two by twos with some cross bracing, and that's about it. Probably about $10 worth of wood, and it's holding up all these 20s, and that's fine. The lighting is very simple. It's fluorescent lights. I haven't changed over to LEDs, and the reason for that is that I can put in a bulb, a fluorescent bulb in here, and I can put in a UVB bulb, and I like that for the crust geckos. It just gives them that little UVB boost. This stand we put together, again, 18 years ago, and this stand was the home of Red Bull and Lucy, our very first high-end crested geckos. We started off with buckskins and gradually moved over to some really high-end geckos, and we're very proud of our lines, and we'll see some of those in just a moment. I mentioned the lighting, but let me take a second and tell you that this whole room and the other room that we'll see in just a moment are all set on timers. These rooms right here, the Crusted Gecko Room and the Leopard Gecko Room, specifically are set up on a very high sophisticated timing system. So let's go ahead and start with the outside of the tank. We've got the name of the animals in here, male on top, female on, on the bottom. We have the number of the tank. This is really important for me because I take this number and I attach it to any eggs that come out of here. I put a date on the eggs, of course, and put them in the incubator. These dots are also very important because they help me identify what kind of crusted gecko is in this tank. This dot with the Neapolitan colors here, this represents a tricolor. A red dot like we can see over here and all the other colors I'll show in a picture that I've done to help me identify all of these colors. So how do I come up with all of these names that I use on these animals? It really depends. It depends on the animals, it depends on their colors, it depends on if I was listening to some songs on the radio and came up with some names that way. Uh, this one, Tri-Color, uh, is the three-headed dog. Triple Threat, three, of course, Rose Petal. Uh, cayenne Pepper, Bell Pepper, very specific to this group. So I try to link the names of the animals together uh, for a male and a female. Here we have St. Nick, and this is one of our outstanding red Harleys and uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock and Strawberry Feels, the names of a couple of songs, so on and so forth. And we'll see all the names on this 20 gallon, as well as the pictures of the animals themselves a little bit later. At this time, before I even go any further, let me ask you to ask me questions down below. I'm gonna go through a lot of information here, a lot of information about crusted geckos, a lot of information about the stand itself, 
but I need you to, to watch the video. And if you have any questions at all, I need you to leave questions in the comments below, please. I'll address them usually within a day. We're gonna talk about the animals in just a moment, but let's talk about what's inside each one of these tanks. And again, let me stress, this is a breeding situation. It's not a display tank. These are not display tanks. These are set up to breed animals. We try to make them as very, as comfortable as we possibly can, but these are set up as a basic breeding facility. These 20 highs and a couple of 20 extra highs are set up with screen tops, so they get a lot of ventilation. That also means that we can mist directly into the tank. And that's a really important point, and I'll come back to that in just a second. Each one of these tanks has egg carton, a big piece of cork bark, some plants in the back, and a hide. Normally there's a food dish here. We've recently fed, but for purposes of this filming, I've taken those food dishes out. In some of the enclosures like this one, we can see that we have a little hide down at the bottom, but some of the enclosures don't have that either. This is plenty of space, plenty of room for these crested geckos to feel comfortable and obviously to breed. You can see each one of these humid hides has a number on it associated with the tank number. And the reason that we do that is that we can pull these humid hides out and then associate that number to a label that we put on the eggs when we put them into the incubation trays. These humid hides or lay boxes are really important for this enclosure because that's where they can pick up humidity when they're shedding. I mentioned that we missed, we missed every other day. And what's really important is, to that is that that misting is done at night and then it stays in the tank. The tank stays moist for at least one day and then it all dries up. Very, very important that you have that moisture dry up in between mistings so things don't get moldy in these tanks. These egg cartons will get a little moist after the misting and that helps hold in the humidity. You might be wondering what material we used in, in these hide boxes, and it's really a mix of dirt and vermiculite and Zilla's jungle mix. And I can get into that specifically in another video. For misting, we're very, very fortunate to actually have a garden hose down here that we can mist all these tanks. You'll notice I don't have any water dishes in these tanks whatsoever. I depend on the misting to supply the water for these geckos. I found when I provided a water dish in the tanks, all that they did was bathe in the water dish and pooped. You'll also see that every single one of these tanks are set up exactly the same way. When I go in to, to uh, gather eggs, I go into the right side in front and gather eggs, every single tank. When I go in to feed, I put the food dish in the same spot when I come in to take it out and replace it, I take it away from the same spot, usually unless the geckos are moving it all over the tank. What's really great about these tanks is that they're super easy to clean. I can take the plastic plants out and put them into our utility sink. I can take the cardboard, throw it away. I can go ahead and wash the cork bark. I can wash the tops and, and the sides of the, the hides. And I can take a razor blade to the glass and clean it off. I can take a putty knife or a painter scraper and scrape all the debris off of the bottom. It's super easy to clean. I can clean one of these tanks in just a few minutes. I mentioned feeding. We feed every other day crusted gecko diet. Over the weekend, I feed insects. We mix up a lot of crusted gecko diet because we're feeding a lot of crusted and gargoyles and day geckos and everything else. And it's just easier to mix it all in a big pitcher. I love these food dishes. They're super easy to use, they're stable, they don't knock over. I can use these for the babies, I can use them for adults. It makes the job of feeding so much easier. And the best thing is that they're super easy to clean. I stack these up, put them in a little six quart container, put water in it, rinse them out a couple of times, and they're done. If I'm feeding insects, I use mealworm cups, and these are so important in our facility. I think I have a mealworm cup in every single one of our adult tanks. Of course, they hold mealworms, but they also hold dubias and crickets. I put a little bit of calcium in the dish, but I also dust the insects before I feed them. It tends to keep the insects in the cup.
So you might be asking why I have a bare bottom tank in all of these enclosures. That's for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's easy to clean. Number two, it's easy to manage the animals. Number three, when I feed crickets, some of, sometimes they don't stay in the cups and they do roam and that makes it easier for the crested geckos to catch the crickets that are roaming. So we've talked about the room, we've talked about the stand, we've talked about the enclosures and what's inside. That's not what you came here for. You want to see animals. Well, let me show you some of the animals in these enclosures. And while I do that, let me talk through some of the questions that you might have about our animals. And again, let me repeat, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of this presentation, please leave a comment below and let me answer that question for you. One of the questions that we get at Supreme Gecko so often from you is, how many crusted geckos can I put in an enclosure? And in a 20 gallon enclosure like we're talking about today, I can't help but think immediately that we can get hundreds and hundreds of crusted geckos in this enclosure. Seriously though, for an enclosure like this, what we do is we'll keep either an individual animal or a pair Rarely do we keep three animals in a 20 gallon enclosure like this, but we do do that if we know exactly the genetics from those animals. I seriously think this 20 extra high is the perfect tank for a pair of crusted geckos. When we talk about the collection of crusted geckos in this rack, you might be asking how old these animals are. Most of these animal, animals are two to three years old. We have a couple like the 101 Dalmatians that are probably about four or five years old. Most of these animals, uh, Cafe Mocha is also probably about four or five years old. Most of these other animals are either their first year of breeding, like cayenne pepper and bell pepper and strawberry alarm clock and strawberry fields. But most of these animals are in the two to three year range. One of the things that you'll notice about these enclosures is that I keep the animals in either pairs or singular or in a couple of examples, trios. And that's a huge, huge controversial topic on the internet today. Cohabitation. I completely believe that a male and a female can be kept together as long as they're cooled in the winter time. Very, very important that you have that cooling period to allow both the male and the female to take a little bit of a break. So how do I determine the pairings of all these different groups? That's a really tricky question because it's all personal opinion. I like the Reds, Red Harleys, Dalmatians, High Harley Contrasts, animals like that. So we pair our animals according to my tastes and what I'm trying to work with in future projects. Hey Gecko fans, thanks for watching today. Thanks for taking the tour of our 20 extra highs. I really enjoyed showing these off. I hope you gathered some information. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment below, ask me the question. I'll get back to you the next day or so. If this video was helpful, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification all. Gecko fans, thank you again for watching.